The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Logger's Larceny. It is mid-afternoon, September 7th, 1938. Two loggers employed by the Gulf Lumber Company are marking timber near a lonely stretch of company logging road in the Piney Woods region of East Texas. Yeah, there. Cutting crew ought to be able to see that, Mark. Yeah. Well, looks like that's the last decent stick left in this stand of timber, too. Uh, plenty more trees in the woods. Come on, we'll cross the creek and start working that stand up on the other side of the road. Uh. We're already marked an awful lot of trees today. I think my axe is heavier than yours. <laughs> I could do with a breather. Yeah, catch it on the round then. Come on. You'll get used to that axe. I told you I'd make a logger out of you. Just stick with me, kid. I'll put muscles like this on your arms. Air on your chest, iron in your fist. Yeah, if I live through it. <laughs> Bull, I'm about done in. Oh, man, that creek sure looks good. Yeah, don't let it fool you. Ain't fit to drink down here. Sawdust pile at the mill poisoned it. Well, what do we do, Wade? Sure, ain't deep enough to swim, is it? But he want to ride across piggyback. Hey, Bull, look. What? Over there on the other side. Up there against that old cutover stump. That's the car. Yeah, upside down, all smashed up. Well, come on. Somebody might be hurt. Hey, Bullet, that's one of the company cars on the mill. Yeah, I see. Sure is wrecked, ain't it? Yeah. Hey, smell that gasoline. Tank's busted wide open. Sure, good thing there wasn't a spark. Uh huh. There'd been some fire if that gas had caught. Hey, look here, kid. In the front seat. Who, who is it, Bull? It's old man Hutton. What's left of him? He's the paymaster. Come on, we'd better get him out of there. No, we can't do nothing for him. But get a load of this bank bag. Hey, that's full of money. Uh-huh. Payroll for the mill. Bull, what are you doing? What are you stuffing that money in your shirt for? Look, kid, we ain't been around here, understand? Hey, you've got no right to that money. Who's got a better one? Who's even going to know it's missing? Unless you shoot off your mouth. Hey, you, you twist my arm. I'll twist your neck right off your shoulders if you let out one word. Bull. For the law! Forget the law. Just remember, you'll get the worst beating you ever had. You understand? Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, that's being smart. Here, throw this sack back in the car while I got my shirt button. But there's still some money left, in it? Sure, all the coins and a few bills. No use being a hog, is it? Besides, this is going to look right. Throw it back in the car, I said. Sure, boy. Sure. Ah, you got a match? Crazy bull, a match with all that gasoline spilled around here? Wait and see how crazy. Give me a match. Okay. Here. There's only one left in the box. That's all you got? Yeah. Well, we'll make this and count in. Now, get back out of the way. The frantic mill superintendent waited until evening to report the missing paymaster and money. Sheriff Stanton immediately contacted the Texas Rangers. An all-points bulletin for the apprehension of the man was sent out, and Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to the case. He arrived at the mill with the sheriff early the next morning. Here's the mill office, Jace. Might as well start there. The quicker we can get a line on Hutton, the better. Yeah. If he's making a run for it, he's already got a big lead on us. Sure. Sure. I've been waiting for you. Uh, meet Ranger Pearson, Mr. Browning. Mr. Browning's the mill superintendent. Howdy, Mr. Browning. Yeah, pleased to meet you, Ranger. Anything new here? No. I, uh, I'm kind of inexperienced at this sort of thing. 
I sure have been waiting for you. The delay is my fault. It was nearly sunup when I met the sheriff. We took time enough for breakfast and to drag the bank teller out of bed. He says your man Hutton left the bank about a half hour after closing time yesterday. Yeah, they waited until the street doors were closed before they started making up Hutton's orders for mixed currency. Now, they usually work it that way at the bank on paydays. $18,000 is a lot of money to count out, you know. Well, we not only know how much money we're looking for, but how much of each denomination. I've got Hutton's list. The bank teller gave me a copy of it. He sure must have slipped out quiet. Not a soul in town saw him after he left the bank. No telling which direction he headed. Uh, would you have a picture of him by any chance, Mr. Browning, to sort of amplify the description we've already sent out? Well, there may be one among his belongings in his shack. You know, Sheriff, I... I still can't believe Bob absconded with that money. $18,000 is a lot of temptation, Mr. Browning. I know it, but... Bob Hutton's been with us for years. I'd have trusted him with every asset the company owns. I just don't know what to think now. We won't rule out any possibility. Before we go through Hutton's things, I'd like to talk to any of your crew who might have been working near the road yesterday afternoon. Well, Foreman Bull Evans and his helper were marking a stand of timber over by Pine Creek. They're down in the drying yard this morning. The rest of the crew's out in the woods. How do they feel about Hutton not showing up? Well, quite a few of them wanted to dig up a rope and go hunting for him. But Bull Evans talked him out of that. Let's go find this foreman of yours. He sounds like some talker. Maybe he can tell us something. Uh, put your shoulder to the dolly, kid. Here. Yeah, that's good. I will stack this load of sheathing beside that last bunch of two-bys. Stand them on in and slide them in against the ridge pole there. Okay. This green stuff's as heavy as lead. Stack it up there straight. Want the whole blame rack to come down on top of you? What's the matter with you? You nervous? No. No, I... I ain't nervous. Give me a hand, won't you, Bull? <laughs> sure. There. Yeah. Yeah. Like I told you, keep your mouth shut and nothing will happen to you. Okay. Get that next stick now. Like right. yeah. that? Maybe we'll make a logger out of you yet. Bull. Bull, look, here comes the boss and a ranger. Yeah. And the sheriff. So what? Grab that next stick and remember what I told you about talking. Ah, hello, boss. Sheriff, find old man Hutton in the payroll yet? Well, this is Ranger Pearson. Oh, howdy, Ranger. Howdy. Ranger and the sheriff want to ask you and the boy some questions. Well, sure, sure. Glad to help. Hey, kid, hold it a minute there, will you? Yeah, sure. I understand you were working somewhere near the road from town yesterday afternoon. No, we were working a stand over on Pine Creek. Sometimes it was near the road, sometimes it wasn't. Did you see anything of Hutton or the company car he was driving? We didn't see any car, did we, kid? No. Did you hear a car going either way on the road? Yeah, we didn't hear nothing, we didn't see nothing. I'm afraid you're barking up a wrong tree, Ranger. How's that, Bull? Old man Hutton wasn't crazy. He'd seen a chance at a lot of money, and he took it. He never headed back this way from town. You'll pick him up someplace long gone from here. All right, Bull. That's all. Yeah, come on, kid. Let's get back to work. Now, wait a minute. I haven't talked to your helper yet. Well, Bull told you we didn't see nothing. I don't know nothing about that money. We're looking for a man right now, son. Not the money he was carrying. Are you as convinced as Bull here that he ran off with the company payroll? Well, I... Well, are you or aren't you? I don't know nothing about it, I tell you. What are you so nervous about? Well, nothing. I, I, I just don't know nothing about it. Look, son, maybe you don't know it, but there's a severe penalty for withholding information from the law in this state. If you do know anything about this case, anything at all, it's your duty to tell the ranger and me now. Well, I... Yeah? Well, there's a pretty bad turn over there on Pine Creek. Mr. Hutton might have had an accident when nobody was around. See, that is a possibility, ranger. That's the worst stretch along the road. And one of those turns is a bad one. Ah, old Bob Hutton could drive that road backwards and blindfolded. He's been doing it for years. Besides me and the kid come in by the road last night. There wasn't no wreck along at 10. Did you see anything, son? No. No, there, there wasn't nothing along the road when we went by. We came out that way this morning, Jace. Wasn't anything inside then, either. Well, the area along the creek is uh, an old cutover. Brush has come back thick in spots. The car down in there could be completely hidden from the road. Well... We're going to have to search every inch of the way out in town to eliminate accident as a possibility in this case anyway, Jace. This bad turn out of the creek sounds like as good a place as any to begin with. Yeah, let's get out there and take a look. Uh, you mind showing us that cutover, Mr. Browning? Well, not at all, Ranger. 
I'll get my car and you can follow me. Uh, Bull, if anything comes up here while I'm going, you take care of it for me, will you? Oh, sure, boss. Sure, I'll take care of everything. Hey, hey. Don't you want me to go with you? No, thanks, son. You better stay here. Yeah, kid, you stay here. There's going to be plenty to keep you busy. <laughs> Roadside tracks and broken brush near the bad turn on Pine Creek were so faint we nearly missed them. The car itself was completely screened from the road by brush. It was badly burned and lay upside down on an open patch of grass. The body of its driver slumped near the wheel. It's an accident, all right, Jace. Seems like. Good heavens. What a way to die. Marks indicate Hutton lost control when he left the road. Judging from the damage to the car, I think there's no question but what he was dead when the wreck caught fire. I hope so. I told you I couldn't believe Bob Hutton would steal that money. Looks like you were right, Mr. Browning. Here, look in this window. Yeah. What a mess. There's your money. What's left of it? There beside the springs of that burned seat cushion. Oh, yeah. I see some corn rolls where the wrappers burned off. And that fluff of ash on top of them is what's left of the paper money. It's hard to believe it would burn that much. It was a mighty hot fire while it lasted. Even the body metals warped all out of shape. Well, Jace, looks like it's back to town for us. I got to get an undertaker's wagon out here to pick up his body. I'll have to kill that all points wanted bulletin on Hutton, too. Guess that'll about wind this up, huh? I'm not so sure, Sheriff. What do you mean? This, this just doesn't feel quite right. What doesn't? Finding this car like this. We might have looked for a day before we found it down here in this brush. Well, don't you have more to go on than that, Ranger? No, nope, nothing more. Just a hunch. Seems like working on hunches would be kind of dangerous in your business. It usually is for somebody. Come on, I, I want to get back to the mill. Well, what do you want to go back there for? You don't need a phone. You can use your car radio. Yeah, I know. But there's something funny about this. I want to get it cleared up. Hey, Sheriff, look out. Hmm? Watch where you're stepping. What is it? That matchbox. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. What's so important about a matchbox? It could be plenty important. Here, look where it's lying. I don't get you, Jace. All right, look up there, Sheriff. That's where Hutton's car turned over. It slid down from there on its roof. The matchbox is right in the track, and it hasn't been crushed. Hmm. Meaning it was dropped after the wreck. What? That's right, Sheriff. Let's see. It's empty. The last match was used and the box thrown away. Well, used for what, Ranger? What's a matchbox got to do with Bob Hutton's death? Maybe nothing. But even when a car is as badly damaged as this one was, even when it's drenched with gasoline, it doesn't always catch fire. Let's go back a minute. Do you know what you're saying? I think so. You mean somebody could have deliberately set this car fire? After the accident? If this was an accident. Oh, but look, Jace, the only possible reason for arson in a case like this would be to cover taking the money Hutton had with him. And it's still there. What's left of it, anyway. I know, Sheriff. There we are. Give me a hand, will you, Sheriff? Sure, Jace. What do you want to do? And see if we can't get what's left of that money out without disturbing the ash around it. I want to send it into the lab. What'll that get you? If any of it's missing, they may be able to tell us. We removed the remains of the charred money bag and its contents as carefully as possible and packed them for transfer to the laboratory. When we drove back to the mill yard, Bull Evans was just coming out of the office. Hi. You find any sign of Hutton? Yes. He's dead, Bull. Dead? He had an accident. Near Pine Creek. Just about where that kid suggested we look, too. Well, can you beat that? Where is the kid? I think we'd better talk to him again. Well, you ain't gonna get much out of him, Ranger. Why? No, these young punks never look where they're going or what they're doing. He's got himself really bunged up. Where is he? In the first aid room back of the office. I wanted to send for a doctor, but he wouldn't let me. I got him on a cot back there. He don't feel so good. Let's take a look. Come on. You too, Bull. Yeah, sure. Right through there, Ranger. Okay. Easy, kid. Let's have a look at him. No. Let me be. Why, his face is pink to a pulp. Bruises on his ribs and belly, too. What happened to you, son? Don't go away. You better answer the Ranger, boy. What happened to you? Go on, kid. Tell him what happened. The drying rack. It fell on me. 
You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. We continue now with tonight's case, Logger's Larceny, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. The kid was in no condition for further questioning. When we were unable to persuade him to submit to medical treatment, the sheriff and I returned to town and had a talk with the justice of the peace. The next morning, the sheriff attended Hutton's inquest while I waited in his office for a call from our lab at Austin. It had just come through when the sheriff returned. Sorry to be so long, Jase. Oh, I was comfortable, Sheriff. You got a nice office. <laughs> Thanks. Inquest over? Yeah. Death by natural causes, I suppose. Yeah, failure of the heart. Doc says Hutton was dead when his car left the road. An out-and-out -out accident. Oh, look, Jase, it's like the J.P. told you last night. That matchbox don't mean anything. It could have blown in on those tracks. I guess this isn't my week for hunches, Sheriff. Now, the lab report came in, too. How did it add up? Coins in the bank sack tallied exactly with the withdrawal slip the teller gave us. Oh, how about the bills, the paper money? And there were traces of them in the ash. The quantity was small and might indicate some paper money was missing, but it burned so completely the lab couldn't be sure. Yeah, looks like that's that. Yeah. Well, Sheriff, I guess I better get started. Well, so long, Jason. Thanks. See you again on another case. Yeah. Call us any time you need us. You know, Sheriff, it still doesn't feel right. You know, Jace, it doesn't to me either. There's that matchbox. Sure, it could have blown in there, but that kid at the mill. Yeah? What about the kid? If he had a hunch Hutton's car was wrecked and where it might be, why didn't he tell his boss that as soon as he and Bull came in from the timber? Yeah, that's right. As it was, he didn't tell us till we dragged it out of it. That turn out there didn't have anything to do with Hutton's death. His heart quit. He could have gone over the edge anywhere along the road. Yeah, but, Jace, he did go over at that turn. Sure he did. And that's why the kid couldn't have known the car was there unless he'd seen it. Then Bull Evans and the kid were lying. But why? That's what we're going to find out. That and why the drying rack fell on the kid. Kind of funny two accidents should happen so close together. Come on, Sheriff. Let's get out to that mill. <laughs> For you and Ranger Pearson back. Something new come up? Not exactly, Mr. Browning. Just a few loose ends. I want to talk to that kid who was hurt yesterday. How is he? Oh, apparently a lot better than he looks. How's that? He was up for breakfast this morning. Insisted he was in shape to work. In shape to work? Mm, that's what he claimed. Well, that kid was in shape for a hospital. Oh, Bull banked him up. He'd been taking care of him. I guess he ought to know. They around the yard here? Well, Bull didn't figure the kid was quite up to yard work. They went out with a felon crew. Together? Sure. Uh, Bull said he'd watch after the kid. Oh, he did, huh? Where are they? Uh, up in the northeast quarter of Section 3 someplace, about four miles out. Come on, Sheriff. We'd better get out there. That kid was in no condition to work. Well, you can't make it in a car. We haven't got our access road to that section finished yet. You got any horses here? Yeah. The one I use for making my rounds of the crews is saddled up out back. Bring it around for the Sheriff. I'll get my horse unloaded from the trailer. All right away, Ranger. Come on, Sheriff. Get on the other side of that end gate, will you? Sure. You think that kid's in any danger, Chase? What do you think? I'm beginning to think so. So am I. Oh, back out, Sparky. Steady, boy. Easy, easy, boy. Uh, here you are, Sheriff. Sheriff's ought to be about right. Now, thanks, Mr. Browning. Now, you take that work road at the corner of the yard. You begin to hit some of the crew out at the end of it. They can tell you just where Bull and his helper is. Thanks. Let's go, Sheriff. Up, Char. Come on, Char. pick him up, boy. Ah! Following Mr. Browning's directions, we found some of his sawyers and axemen at work in deep woods. They sent us on to others, knowing only that Bull Evans and the kid were working somewhere up ahead. Hold it, Sheriff. Oh, 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 oh. Listen. Somebody working over there. Yeah, come on. Let's go, Charlie. Yeah, come on, boy. Is it Bull and the kid? No. Oh, 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 oh. Hey there. Howdy, Sheriff. Ranger. 
What you doing out here? Looking for Bull Evans and his partner. Boys down the line said they were up this way. Yeah, they were a little while ago. Where'd they go? I'm blamed if I know. I'm too crazy. Crazy? What do you mean? Well, that bull was working over there. You can see the cut he was making. Uh-huh. The kid wasn't worth much, bunged up the way he was, so he was just fooling around, kind of grubbing out a little brush. Well, that bull come over to bum a smoke off of me, and when he turned around, the kid was gone. Gone? Yeah. Slipped off in the brush. Bull hollered for him. When he didn't get no answer, Bull took right off after him, swearing fit to make old Paul Bunyan turn over in his grave. How long ago? Oh, 10, maybe 15 minutes ago. Come on, Sheriff. Hey, look, what is all this? Tell you later, son. Come on, let's go for it. Lift him, son. Here's the tracks again on this soft ground. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, charcoal. <laughs> Wait a minute, Sheriff. Steady, boy. What do you make of it, Jace? I don't like it. Where do you suppose that kid's heading? Yeah, it beats me. Wherever it is, he's sure heading there in a straight line and hard as he can go. Yeah, with Bull apparently right behind him. Makes about as little sense as that drying rack falling on him yesterday or Bull talking him into reporting for work this morning. What's between the two of them? That's what we got to find out. Tracking us too slow. We're losing too much time. That's pretty thick timber ahead. Get out of slow them up some. Won't be much to follow when we get in there in those pine needles either. Uh, Jace, maybe we better split, sort of spread out. That way we'll be. Hey, hear that? Somebody in there's got a gun. Come on, get up, charcoal. Come on, get up. You know I'm betting it's bull. Sounds like the shots are in the middle of that timber stand. That's a bad place to work blind, Jace. Yeah. You might miss them complete in there. Possible. Look, sheriff. You cut around the timber the other edge in case somebody breaks out in the clear in that direction. I'll head straight for the sound of those shots. Try to box them in, huh? It's worth a try. Come on, Charlie. Come on, team of horse. Let's go. Deep into the timber, I stopped near a blowdown. A huge living pine tree blown over onto the ground. I wanted to listen for movement. But I knew an armed man was somewhere ahead of me, and charcoal seemed to sense my tenseness. Whoa, Charcoal. Steady, boy. Steady. Take it easy, Charky. Confound it. What are you shying away from? Whoa, whoa, boy. All right. Crawl out from under that blowdown. No. No. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Nobody's going to shoot, kid. Crawl out of there. No, get away, will you? Leave me be. He'll kill me if he finds me. Get hold of yourself, kid. Who'll kill you? What for? Bull. He almost caught me. You're all right now, son. Come on out. He shot at me. I crawled in there and he lost me. He ran on past. I heard him. But he'll be back. You better tell me why he's after you. Come on, spill it quick. Oh. I saw him take the money. From Hutton's wreck car? Yeah. Yeah, we came down to the creek and there it was. He took the money and threw a match into the gasoline. He burned the car. Mr. Hutton's still in it. Oh, settle down. Take it easy. Hutton was dead when his car left the road. Why didn't you tell us about this yesterday when we asked well, you? Well, I, I tried to tell you, but... Bull was standing there watching, listening. And look what happened to me afterwards. That accident at the drying rack? The accident. He pushed the rack over to make it look that way. Afterwards, he beat me and almost killed me. Came close enough. Why didn't you sneak out to Mr. Browning with your story last night? I never got a chance. Bull got a gun out of his passports bag and kept it under his blanket all night, pointed at me. He never slept a wink. I had to get up this morning and make it look like I... I wanted to come out here to work with him. Why'd you head in this direction when you made your break this morning? Well, I figured if I could get to the money and get it back to Mr. Browning, this would all be over, and well, then I'd be safe. You know where the money is? Yeah, yeah, it's an old stump in a draw between here and the road. Come on, charcoal will carry double. We got some riding to do. I could understand the kid's terror. A professional criminal knows the odds against him and seldom goes beyond a certain limit. An amateur is like a man in quicksand, more desperate with every step and more dangerous. There. there that's the stump right over there. Ooh, Charlie. Ooh, ooh, boy. There's a hollow on the other side of it. Now, hurry up, will you? Uh-huh. Take it easy, kid. Charcoal made a lot better time than Bull could have made on foot. Besides, he's still probably looking for you. Well, maybe he's been here already. We'll soon see. Yeah. It's here, all right. Can't you hurry? Hey, this is a pile of money. Yeah, I know. Come on. All set, kid. Just as soon as I stash these bills away in my saddlebags, this is what you call valuable evidence. And this is what's called a gun, Ranger. Bull! Praise Father. 
You're making a mistake, Bull. You've made yours. Drop him saddlebags. You ain't getting that money. It's mine. Now drop him. All right, get off that horse, kid. Get off, I said. All right. Now start backing away from my money. Both of you. I told you I'd kill you if you opened your mouth, kid. Now it's going to be both of you. You, you hurt, kid? No. No, are you okay? Yeah. Bull's gun just didn't shoot very straight. Oh, you sure didn't, and fast. That's what a spring clip holster's for, son. Chase! Chase! Oh, boy, ho, ho, ho. Everything all right? Yeah, for everybody but Bull. He, he's dead? Kind of. What was the deal, Chase? Did he have some of the money from the wreck? Show him what's in the saddlebags, kid. All right. Hey, Sheriff, take a look. Hmm. Looks like he had it all. How deep was the kid here in with him? I reckon that's something the court will have to judge on the evidence. Here, give me a hand, Sheriff. We'll hang Bull across your saddle. He's got one last ride coming. On November 12th, 1938, the kid was arraigned before the county court and found innocent of willful complicity in the theft from the paymaster's wrecked car. He was returned to society with a deeper appreciation and understanding of the duties of a citizen in the face of crime. And here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae. You know, we're awfully grateful to you people for the nice letters you've sent in. It makes you feel good to know that there's some folks who just want to let you know that they're all for you and that they like your show. I know it's kind of an effort to sit down and write a letter or postcard to a voice hundreds of miles away, and that's why it would be downright ungrateful if we didn't thank you for your trouble. It's really a compliment. There's a little story I ran across about a ranger I thought you'd like to hear before we say goodnight. I thought it was kind of funny. It seems that in the days when the Texas Rangers were charged with the enforcement of the Prohibition laws, their reputation for apprehending offenders caused moonshiners to keep a sharp eye out for these famed officers. One day on a lonely road in East Texas, a moonshiner with a load of bootleg whiskey rounded a turn and came upon a man dressed in khaki clothes, big hat, and boots, signaling him to stop. Frantically, he grabbed a wrench and broke all ten of the one-gallon bottles of whiskey. Turning to the man in the road, he called... You can't arrest me, Ranger. You ain't got no evidence. What do you mean, fellow? Replied the Texas Ranger. I have a flat tire. Can you loan me your jack? Good night, folks. See you again next week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Frenchie. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Bill Conrad, Stacey Harris, Parley Bear, and Bill Johnstone. This story was transcribed and adapted by Tom W. Blackburn, and the program was produced and directed by Stacey Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Monday is for music, the best in music on NBC. Tomorrow evening, the telephone hour brings you contralto Marion Anderson as guest soloist. And for a melodic blend of light classical and classical music, you're invited to the second concert in a new Monday evening series by the Boston Pops under the baton of Arthur Fiedler. Now Jack Parr with the $64 question for more good times on NBC. NBC.